Welcome to my Cisco CCNA Security Lab Review. Here we're looking at Lab 5412, configuring an iOS IPS using the CLI. I have my packet trace file open. I have my lab document here. I have the address tables off my screen. Scroll down. I'm going to go to part one. It is important to note this information right here. This is the how the lab is pre-configured. So, hop on R1. Our console password is Cisco C O N P A 55. Our enable password is Cisco E N P A 55. Now that we are in step 1A, let's go into a show version. And you're going to see that we have an IP base. We have the security, but it's currently disabled. So what we want to do is hop to our terminal. You know, I'll just type it out. License boot module. C119 technology package SEC. Do I accept the terms and services? Yes. Next, we need to actually go ahead and save the config. So, copy, run start. Let's do our show version again. You'll see. Next reboot, we will load IP base and security. Let's go ahead and save the running config and reload it. And it should be restarting now. Jumped ahead of myself, we'll do the show version when I get back again. Cisco C O N P A five five enable Cisco E N P A five five show version It is showing currently being IP base and security so we are good with step one going down to step two Let's ping PCC to PCA, desktop, command prompt, ping, we're going to ping the IP address of PCA, request then we got three solids that's good let's go ahead and ping PCC from PCA ping 192.168.3.2 our request already was sent from C to A so they already know what the addresses are hence the quicker response for this guy so we're good there so step two is done scroll down a little bit further Let's create an iOS IPS configuration directory in Flash. Alright, so on R1, what we're going to do is, from R, user exec mode, mkdir, ipdir, because it says, oh, sorry, ips, dir, because it says make the directory and name the directory ips, dir. Create the directory. Yes. Should give us a directory in Flash. Yes. So step three is done. Step four, 
configure the IPS signature storage location. So first thing we have to do is jump in our global configuration mode, config T, we need to go ahead and do IP, IPS, config. From this point, let's do question mark. So we have location, location of IPS configuration file. So what we want to do is clearly location, question mark, and then where do we want to put it? We want to put it in flash, and we want to put it in the directory IPS DIR. So IP, IPS config, location, and then the location we're putting it. So that took care of step four. Okay, so once we've done that, let's go to step five. We want to create an IPS rule named IP IPS net. No. We want to create the rule iOS ISP, and how we do that is with that command right there. So what we're going to do is, from the global configuration mode, IP IPS name iOS IPS. And again, if you're not sure, as long as you know the beginning portion of it, you can always question mark it out. And that took care of step five. So step six, enable logging. So what we're going to have to do is iOS IPS supports the use of a syslog just in the event notifications. Enable the sys, uh, syslog if it's not enabled. So how do we do that? IP, IPS, let's do question mark, config, cell, name, notify, signature, signature. Well, I bet it's probably going to be that notify. So notify, and we want to do logs. Next, so we've done that. Set clock rate. So let's go and set clock. So set clock. Time right now it happens to be set 10 31 let's say 50 seconds. It happens to be 23 September, oh, help if I spelled it correct, 2017. Oh, I totally messed that one up. Clock set. Oh, that's, uh-huh, it's been a little while since I had to do this. We set the clock in user exec mode, not global configuration. Okay. Now from there, let's hop back in our global configuration mode. You get to the point where you do this so many times you just forget certain things, and that was like one of those. That's a dumb mistake, just because I normally don't have to set my clock rates, or my clock Verify that timestamp is enabled. So that's going to be a service. So service timestamp. We're going to make sure that the logs are time or date and time. All right. So we've taken care of that guy. Next, we need to actually set the send long messages, we have to set the syslog server. So logging, host, and then what is the IP address of our log server? It should be 192.168.1.50. All right, so step six is taken care of. Alright, so step seven, uh, retry all signature categories with the retry true command, all signatures, release, 
We're going to use that. All right, so how do we do that? First thing is IP IPS question mark space question mark. We are looking at signature categories. All right, so you'll notice we're now in the sub command of categories. Let's do a question mark. Let's do category all. We want retired set to true. Because again, we're kind of going off of that. Now we want category iOS. IPS basic. We want that set to retired false. And exit and exit. And are we sure we want to accept these? Yes, we do. Build time. All right. So our IPS is now most of the way set up. We've configured it. Now we have to uh, apply it. So step eight actually is apply the IPS rules to an interface. So how we do that is we go to our interface, interface gig zero one, and we want to do IP, IPS, everything was in the iOS, IPS, and we want to apply it on the outbound route and there it goes all right so let's move on to part two let's go ahead and modify the signature so let's change the event actions of our signatures so unretry the echo request signature 2004 and change the signature action to alert and drop I'm going to get back to this, my global configuration mode. IP, IPS, question mark. We're no longer changing categories. Now we're looking at signature definitions. We're looking at specifically signature 2004, ID 0. We're playing with the status. Retired, we're going to change it to false. We want to go ahead and enable it to be true. And exit. Enable it and change the signatures to drop it. All right. Last thing is, let's do our engine. We want to make sure that it is a an event action procedure alert. We want to do another event action. Deny packet inline. Change the signature actions to alert and then drop. Event action alert and then to drop it, the nine. All right, so let's do event action. Let's do question mark. Because there are two big ones: alert and the nine. Produce an alert and then deny the packet. Uh, we in our lecture discussed the different event actions. That's why we knew about them already. Now we should be able to exit, 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 and yes. So, step one is done. Actually, let's do a show IP, IPS, all. And here we go. Total active signatures. Our different categories, 
category all, race category iOS, IPS basic. And we are good there. To which interface and which direction is the iOS IPS rule applied? Interface configuration, interface gig 01, inbound not set, outbound it is set. So it is set to gig 01 outbound. Let's go ahead and let's verify now. PCC to PCA. This should fail because the IPS rule for the event action of an echo request was set to deny. And there it is, it's denying or timing out. All four packets. One more, come on. All right, now we're gonna do A to C and this should uh, be successful because the rule does not cover echo replies only echo requests. So step three is taken care of. Let's go ahead and let's view the syslog messages. Syslog. All right, so click syslog, select the service tab, click on syslog in this guy. And here we go. Here are our logs. Date and time as the appropriate. So completion percentage should be 100%. Let's go ahead and check results. And it is showing 100%. 11 out of 11, all items complete. If you have any questions about this lab, please let me know. Leave a comment below if you have any questions.